We're about to open a big can of worms here. We're about to tackle the topic of perception. Perception must be central to cognitive science. Cognitive science is about the knower and the known and the relationship between them. It's about how any person or animal or organism comes to know its world. It's a very, very rich topic and it's full of all the richness of minds. <clears throat> And just as we won't have one story to tell about minds, we won't have one story to tell about perception. But we'll be asking into the role of the senses in getting by in the world, the role of knowledge of different kinds in supporting that. And the world itself is something we'll have to consider. The world is not simply given. A jellyfish encounters a different world from a spider who encounters a different world from a modern urban office worker, for example. And we'll also be careful to ask to not to to treat of perception as if it was a distinguished process that had nothing to do with anything else because perception is always in the services of the organism and therefore it's tightly coupled to the behavior of the organism or to action so perception and action are intrinsically linked um, and we'll be paying attention to that now it's such a rich topic i think it's good to hone our intuitions maybe a little bit by starting out by considering uh, a much simpler approach to perception than we'll find with humans. So we're going to begin with the jellyfish. Jellyfish are rather simple animals. From an evolutionary point of view, they're very, very old. They predate not only mammals and dinosaurs, they predate animals with bilateral symmetry. They're one of the very first cases where we can say that's an animal and they're also one of the first nervous systems that evolved now modern day jellyfish are not billions of years old of course they're probably spawned this year but in contemporary jellyfish we see a design of the nervous system which is probably very similar to the first nervous systems that ever evolved and in these animals there's no brain there's no center of command. There's a distributed nerve net that runs through the whole body and which pulses, causing the jellyfish to pulse. You've all seen jellyfish. So the jellyfish occupies a maximally simple world. It's the wide open ocean and there's just water and there's just up and down. Up and down are important questions. Gravity pulls the jellyfish down. The light shines in from the sun at the top, and that's typically where the food is going to be. It's the surface layers of the ocean that are rich in nutrients, and as you go down, there's less to eat. We're not even going to start with the jellyfish, the adult jellyfish. We're going to start off with this little guy. This little hairy gooseberry is the larva stage of one species of box jellyfish. Now, box jellyfish occur sometimes off the coast of Ireland and they can give you a very nasty sting. But at the larva stage, they're totally harmless. This is nothing more than a tiny little hairy gooseberry. This particular species lives in the Caribbean in relatively shallow water. And it provides us with a beautiful example of the simplest possible visual system, I think. Now, recall that for a jellyfish, there's basically two questions. They're the same question. Which way is down and which way is up? The question of which way is up is answered by this jellyfish larva. In the larva, there are five differentiated cell types. Two of them are in the skin, as it were, the outer boundary, and the other three are inside. So we're only interested in those external ones. Most of those are very simple single cells, each of which has a little hair sticking out. That's the hairs on the gooseberry. And the hair just wiggles randomly generating un, undirected motion. But in between those wiggling hairs, there are some cells shown here with a little dark spot in the middle. They also have hairs, and you can see one of these cells blown up at the bottom of the slide there. But where this hair comes in, it's nested in a socket that has some photosensitive chemicals which respond to the gradient of the incoming light, that is the angle at which light is hitting this jellyfish, causing the hair to adopt a fixed angle with respect to that gradient. Now, we've got a load of wiggling hairs, and some of them have a fixed angle with respect to the gradient of the incoming light. 
Use your intuition here. What does this provide? Well, if you've ever been in a boat, you know how a rudder works. The rudder, you stick it in the water and you hold it at a fixed angle and it steers the boat. That's something what's like what's going on here. We have motion generated by the wiggling of lots of hairs, but we have a steering done by these hair cells, these ocelli, which adopt a fixed angle with respect to the gradient of the incoming light. The little guy is called Tryptodalia cystophora, but I don't think any of them even speak Latin. They're really rather simple creatures. Um, but they give us what I think is the simplest visual system you could conceive of. It responds to stimulation in the environment, to light indeed in the environment. It influences the behavior of the organism. So we've got perception and action linked entirely, inseparable. And it serves the purposes of the organism. It's there for something. It's very useful for the box jellyfish larva to be able to know which way is up. Those are some great lessons to learn. Well, before we leave jellyfish, I want to just have a brief look at, the, at an adult jellyfish, because there's also something beautiful and something to learn from them. This little jellyfish larva is so simple, it doesn't have a nervous system, it doesn't have an, there's no sensory organ here. That, its ability to perceive and act is distributed through its whole body. And when it grows up, it will grow a nervous system, and it will also have little organs like this, which are called statocysts. They're about the simplest sensory organ one can consist of, one can think of, and they're extremely beautiful. What a statocyst is, there's a little bubble, so you can see there's cells which enclose a volume filled with fluid. And on the inside of this little bag, there's little tiny hair cells which are sensitive. And in there, there's also a pearl, a tiny little stone called a statolith. That's all you need to know. Look what's going to happen. As the jellyfish moves around and shifts its orientation, gravity is going to ensure that the pearl sits at the bottom of the statocyst. It's going to stimulate different nerve cells depending on the orientation of the jellyfish. And those stimulated cells can then inform the nervous system so that the nervous system can affect the pulsing and swimming of the jellyfish. So this design is maximally simple, and it answers the other question jellyfish have. If the larva answered the question, which way is up? This one answers the question, which way is down? So this is good for getting our intuitions in order as we set out on this. Even the simplest animals must come to grips with their world. It's a dangerous business being alive, and you need to be responsive to, to the world that you encounter. Perception arises in response to this, but it's always purposive. It serves a function. It's for finding food, finding mates, escaping predators, finding your way back home. Now, by the time we get to humans, there'll be a few more functions we want to put in there. But it's always purposive. It serves some function in the living of the organism. Sense organs, then, are sensitive to some aspects of the world, and not to all aspects. They're selectively sensitive to those aspects of the world that are relevant to the survival of the organism. Um, in honing our intuitions here on the jellyfish, we've seen that perception and action need to be considered together. So if, if something is responding to light, we also ask, why is it responding to light? How does that affect the behavior of the organism? And we managed to get through this first consideration of perception without any notion of information. We could have spoken loosely of information, uh, but we didn't need to. That word is going to cause us problems as we go on. Um, but this has been a good place to start, to ground some intuitions. And in the next video, we'll move on to talk about humans and their many senses.